So um, welcome folks to part two of our, our greenhouse infrastructure dis discussion. Um, we're tackling scale scope and execution for commercial, commercial vegetable production, especially crops. Um, I'm Stephen Bond. I work the Southern Plains for Intertribal Ag. I've, I've, um, I've, I've been in uh, Western region and Eastern Oklahoma region and do work uh, throughout the U.S. with, with uh, greenhouse production and, and, uh, and just uh, vegetable production and wherever I'm, wherever I'm sent or needed. Um, so this is a continuation of, of the of the talk. Um, the we went through um, all the, the the basic materials, and I thought we may just do kind of a buffer up front. I'll fly through a few slides. So uh, on the recap, um, we covered all these topics. So um, the there's a lot of steps in putting in a large scale commercial operation, and and these these projects generally take well over a year um, to, to plan and design and, and to get all the contractors set up and uh, weather permitting kind of kind of situations. So they're um, depending on the, the size of the greenhouse. So if we're doing, you know, kind of just a simple standalone greenhouse, those things can usually be erected and um, electrified and plumbed and, and stocked all, all pretty, um, pretty fast, but still, you know, uh, with, with, with two, uh, knowledgeable builders, it may it may take well over a month and sometimes a few months. Um, so there's, you know, we're 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 talking about greenhouses under the context of the COVID funding, uh, or that's that's what uh, prompted the interest um, in in this. And and um, but we've we regularly receive uh, inquiries on on assistance with greenhouse um, design and deployment, um, USDA programming and. Uh, all over all over the country of very various sizes usually below 10,000 square feet so so um, so what what I've what I'm anticipating is that most of the folks on this call aren't building a 10 million dollar um, structure at their at their reservation or, or in on their farm uh, but may be more interested in like a, a 30 by 90 um, or a, or a, a propagation greenhouse to facilitate their their other vegetable production, but greenhouse production is is increasing and the technology is more and more attainable and uh, um, specifically like the, the computer automated control systems that link back to your phones and uh, the irrigation industry has gotten, gotten really um, uh, a lot of exciting products out and so it's, I've been working in greenhouses for about 20, 20 years now and I've seen a, a lot of development um, the uh, we're having more and more control, and there's there's a, a greater demand for a higher quality um, produce year round. So we're seeing a an increase in production. Um, this is principally for tomato production um, here here in the U.S. It varies by by country and and obviously by state, um, but we can see that um, kind of a, a a generic or a a broad blanket of of what folks are growing in greenhouses. And now we're, I, I just read an article about uh, grape production and potentially olive production in, in some covered systems. So the, the idea is that it mitigates uh, our, our global weirding scenario, the, the climate change and, and, and helps us um, maintain a better control over our, our product. And, and many of us are, are being invaded with, um, with, with all kinds of economic pests um, and so, so it's it's also a way to to elude pests. And I'm going to apologize. We have an office cat today. Um, so uh, a map layout of kind of where where a bunch of the the tomato production is is located. And I'm I'm here in Oklahoma. We there there are some really large systems in Oklahoma. Um, the the 10,000 uh, square foot plus. Um, there's probably some bordering on the 100,000. Not a little more, but California obviously is going to be the, the the heaviest hitter, and and then um, Nebraska's got quite a bit of greenhouse production. They're just in a really sweet spot for for, for greenhouse um, climate control. So this is from the last um, last PowerPoint. We talked about uh, doing the consideration: do we do we do we do greenhouse production or field production or both? And so there's there's strengths and and and, and considerations for for both 
both methods, I think for a lot of the, the tribal operations, they're already doing some outdoor production. A, a greenhouse could, could greatly complement their, their systems. Uh, so when you're considering whether or not to do greenhouse production or fill production, it's, it's really a site specific question. And, and the northern climates is going to be more costly to operate a greenhouse in the winter and southern climates is going to be more costly to operate a, a greenhouse in the summer. Um, so, so you just kind of pick and choose and these are design elements that are also going to go into your, your overall build. We're not just going to fetch a, a greenhouse off farm tech and um, expect it to be optimized for, for production. Um, some other considerations are, are um, access to skilled laborers. Um, that's all, that's an easy one. We can always train. We're, we're good at that. Um, there's not a lot of second generation greenhouse producers, especially, you know, in, in our, our tribal communities. Um, so the, this is a different set of skills. Um, you, you may also consider cost. And so it's going to be return on investment. And obviously the, the, the infrastructure development and upfront cost of field production is going to be much less than, than greenhouse production. And these numbers are just kind of give us an idea of, of, um, of so we can do a side-by-side -side comparison and we're going to get more produce out of a smaller area. So if you have an area consideration, so you don't have a large space, you may be able to produce more. Um, site selection is, is huge. Um, we want, we want good infiltration rate. Um, if you're on a, you know, even if you're going to have a, a, one of these greenhouses on a slab, you're going to, you're going to still be dealing with drainage or you're going to have drainage ponds. Um, you're going to want to be thinking about parking and buffers and room expansion. If you need to add a, an additional um, working area or storage or, or, or looking to expand into a, a gre additional greenhouses. And, and so if you can um, latch onto a 10 acre plot, that's, that's going to be quite a bit of room to, to, to really kind of um, to grow into and, and, and to negate some of the, the issues of, of, of parking and getting the semis and things in that are going to be delivering a lot of your materials. So orientation, north-south orientation, um, topography, you're going to want to slope. This is kind of, you know, just for about um, any, any, any building. And if, if, you, if you can find a site that obviously is nice and relatively flat, then that's a great start. Um, utilities that's that's gonna we can get into a some, some significant costs when developing greenhouse spaces depending on the climates and the amount of environmental controls that we're going to utilize um, with utilities um, and so the if we're going real big we're going to go three phase we're going to be bringing in um, every you know everything's going to be on 220 as it as it can these are continuously operated commercial motors that that drive a lot of the fans um, you're, you're also going to have, um, you know, large pumping structures for hydroponic systems and, um, and filtration. And so, so utilities can be significant, um, for the, the, the 30 by 90, you know, a, a regular barn drop is going to be, going to be fine. So just a, a power line feed, um, that, that you would see for a typical barn, um, barn build. Uh, regulations. Uh, we've I've already been talking to several folks in the last last month or so on CARES Act funding, and and um, there's some some really big ambitious plans to you know to put in an eight hundred thousand dollar system or a or a um, a, a series of, of of hip jointed greenhouses, um, and we don't have a. good access to, to, to utilities at, at one of the sites. And so I, I think it's going to, it's probably going to get, um, the, the whole plan is going to get scrapped unless they find another site. Um, so regulations, of course, wetland regulations, all this, all these things apply to, um, to our operation. And when we go to seek USDA funding, it's going to be applicable there too. So, um, you're going to form a master plan in, in the, in the beginning stages of, of planning and you're going to go gather all the folks in that you need to, to form, form these plans. I've sat in meetings with, with a, a dozen people uh, with, with a tribe, which, you know, includes the grower, a, a, a planning developer for the tribe. You know, usually the, um, you're going to have uh, facilities and, and, and 
resources there. You're going to have the the crew. It's good to bring the crew in, you know, to to talk about this. Anyone with experience is going to be going to be part of it. It's going to be great. And then we'll we'll have you know the grant writers. And but but this this is going to be a, a team effort. And 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 it's and the the more folks you can get in on one of these operations, the better. Um, storage is is really important because you need things on a on a regular basis so this uh, depending on the crop that you're planting you may um, you may be harvesting weekly or bi-weekly um, the you may be planting out materials and bumping up or uh, moving things and so you're gonna you're gonna want to be able to have some some protected storage area and we use a we've got two skids I've got a mini skid and a, a regular skid we use regularly at the at, at my facility so, um, so heat, heating, floor heat, cooling, multi-stage, evaporative cooling, all, all of these um, are elements of the environmental controls. And, and you, can, you, you may have one or all of them. Um, if, you, if you didn't have any environmental controls, you would just have a hothouse is what we would um, tr traditionally call it. Um, the greenhouses in Oklahoma all have a cooling cell and a, and a large fan that, that pulls the air through the, the cooling cells and it acts as a, a, like a swamp cooler effect. Um, we utilize multi-stage ventilation, so that means um, that our, 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 our thermostats have, have two settings, so our, our fan will come on low, you know, for the morning hours, and then when it heats up, it'll kick on, and that's, that's kind of standard operating procedure in, in, in a lot of these um, cooling systems these days. Horizontal airflow is absolutely imperative. Um, if you don't have um, roll-up sides, you know, on a smaller system, um, you're going to have uh, a, um, some horizontal hurricane fans is, is one of the brands and, and it's what a lot of folks call them in the industry is just kind of a, a fan that will channel an airflow um, down either side of your greenhouse and so you can get good airflow and it, it, it mitigates disease and, and, and pests and, um, and increases your, your, pro your productivity. So, so these, these these systems are, are, are engineered systems that are taking account like plant physiology and the transpiration rate of plants and the humidity levels in the greenhouse. And, and so there, there's a lot of, um, a lot of synergy between the, the, the variables in, in the greenhouse and that you have to take into account. So basically you're going to, you're going to want really good airflow. Now I, on the last talk, we, we spoke about like, how could we, where, where do we get started and do we, you know, do we, do we contact greenhouse manufacturers up front? And, um, and, it, and that, that is not a bad strategy because they're going to, they're going to already, you know, installed many of these and they're going to have recommendations and they're going to be familiar with the terminology and the, and all the, the items that you can add to, to control the environment. And um, so that's going to be kind of built into that manufacturer's recommendation with the type of fan and, they don't have to do a lot of calculations, but we can also run the calculations independently. And it's just, um, they're just kind of, you know, like any calculation, just tedious numbers, but it's, it's pretty basic. Like how much air are we moving per cubic feet per minute? Um, and you, there's some equations that I should have up, but for anybody that, that is really interested in that, there's a, um, a student level handbook that I'm going to recommend folks take a look at because it's just a, a, a compensatory treatment of greenhouse scale production and it and it's it's not super technical it's just it's just what we need to, to read but okay so production layout that this is going to be a, a, another site specific specific um, to the crop uh, the the tribe or producers needs uh, you're going to be thinking about potting the, the seedlings up. You're going to be thinking about the harvest and moving things around. Um, depending on the scale of your system, you may need an employee area and restrooms, bug exclusion zones with fright netting are, are highly recommended because it is most challenging to, to get rid of infestations in greenhouses, especially in, on, in an organic production model. So the best, the best course of action, your best management practice is is um, is to exclude the the area from bugs, which kind of ties back into the um, if we're doing outdoor and greenhouse production, we gotta we gotta integrate that into our um, biosecurity protocols. So you don't want to 
you know, go go pick um, to, tomato hornworms off of your plants in the morning and then go into the greenhouse in the afternoon because it's nice and cool, um, like my partner does. But so utilities um, should, should provide for expansion phases as well. Um, it's if most greenhouse operations are, are going to expand in the, the first year. Um, that that's just if if you're growing a, a good crop and you've got a good market and you're able to load out the pallets of vegetables, um, they can, they'll buy as many as you can grow. Um, so so it's it's a when you're bringing in the service, go ahead and and throw down for a little little hotter service than you need. And and the same is true for for water infrastructure development. Think about that. Um, concrete floors are are really um, uh, imperative in these most high-tech systems that are um, you know ec economic economically relevant to, to to utilize concrete floors in some areas it's it in co cooler climates i would highly recommend concrete floors because you're gonna have a thermal mass but it also helps you negate the bugs uh, com coming in and out and helps with with cleanliness uh, and you can integrate the ther thermal heating into the into the slab, and and that could that can make up you know twelve percent of your heating, and overall reduce your your, your cost of production. So we talked about three different categories of greenhouses. This is really broad. So freestanding that are connected, uh, and the ventilated structures, which are the mega greenhouses, and and I, I'm assuming that most folks are going to be um, looking at a freestanding greenhouse, and and the reason I say that is is the um, you can you can do a, a, a real high tech um, uh, Nexus Bell or uh, I'm forgetting some of the other brand names, but a, a really nice 30 by 90 uh, with all the bells and whistles is going to is going to be up in the 180 once once the, the project's said and done. So that's so that's going to be a, a, a an easy system to pop up um, and in this this short time frame. You know, if we're doing larger, uh, more extensive production in, in the acres scale, those those projects, once again, they're going to take take a year or so. And gutter connects aren't that much more of a of a of a jaunt from from the freestanding, and so you may do a double um, gutter connect, and that that's what I actually meant with, for the hundred like hundred eighty thousand um, dollar price range. Um, freestanding is going to be your most common. And so this system that we're looking at in this image is is going to be in the sixty seventy thousand dollar range, depending on how it's specked out inside. Um, this gutter connect is would be a um, this is set up for retail, so um, it, it would be a little bit more, and it's got got a we got some fancier options, but a, a production greenhouse that that didn't have the the rock ledge and the the glass doors and and the the poly on on the side. Would, wouldn't be um, as much. So Vinlo structures, this is the, the largest scale operations and, and these are in the, the million dollar range usually. Um, now there, there are um, quite a bit of folks that are, that are doing a, a smaller variation of, um, ter it's like ter Terrence, Terrace, oh God, I'm trying to remember that. Lat, um, Lat, Lat farming. So, so we're not reinventing the wheel here. We're just we're growing under a wooden structure that that resembles a Venlo, um, only they've got a, a frost cloth over the top or shade cloth over the top, and sometimes plastic depending on the climate. Um, and the so you're you're basically building a rectangular greenhouse, and you're going to remove the plastic when it gets hot, um, and you're going to still get some of the benefit of precluding insects and, and controlling a bit of the rainfall and and wind uh, wind damage so uh, what water quality if i was to to identify one thing that that is usually the deal breaker for site selection and greenhouse development it it have to be water quality um, the water ranges in quality you know, with, within a within a county, much less across states or across the, the nation, since we're doing this as like a national conversation. Um, but the just about anywhere you are, the water can be filtered. 
So if you if you've got quantity, you can you can deal with quality. It's just it's just a matter of of spending money, and some of these systems are are quite expensive. So um, your your basic simple systems are going to be a, a a sand filter. Um, disc filters are 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 not much more high tech, and if you're doing a sand filter, you're probably going to have a disc disc filter um, in line. Now, if we're doing the smaller scale 30 by 90s. Um, we can we could probably get a, we can get away with that um, depending on on the the quality of your water going into it. Um, now, if you're if you're getting into hydroponics, and, and even even if you're not doing hydroponics, even if you're doing like a, a variation of non recovery hydroponic or uh, a, um, or, or just just watering plants, you're going to see a, a, a tremendous benefit from utilizing a reverse osmosis system because you're going to uh, have a better efficiency with the use of your your nutrient solutions um, if you're if you've got a lot of compounds in your in your water a lot you know a lot of elements floating around in there it's gonna it's gonna reduce the your your potential for for saturation of your of your fertilizer so um, so this, so your water quality is also going to influence your your irrigation types. Um, they they do make sprinkler systems for dirty water. Uh, some of the the micro systems that we're going to talk about in, in a few slides down are are going to are going to be highly sensitive to to the smallest grains of of, of sand. So if you've if you've got a sandy well, for instance, that's going to you know your your water quality may be uh, otherwise good except you got you know small particles of sand well it'll it'll jam up these little sprinkler systems and so you use a sand filter ironically but um, you use a sand filter and back flush it regularly and and that'll that'll diminish the the, the particles in your water um, the if the, the cleaner your water the purer the water you know from a, like an RO system um, the the better growth performance you're gonna see out of your plants and and there are recirculatory systems in in the hydroponic world and where where you're going to have a, a stock solution that that is re, um, returned uh, back to that that original holding cell and and then sent out again in another cycle and these are going to cycle you know for for a, a, a small um, time frame on a on a frequency depending on on your your plant needs and then there's recycle systems where you're going to have a, a holding pond and and the water from the greenhouse is going to um, enter the the holding pond after you've you know it's going to go down the slope and run off into your holding pond and then you may be recirculating that or recycling that water up through a a, a filtration system that's removing the diseases and like phytophthora is common commonly ran through water quality systems and then you're going to um you're going to retain your fertilizer solutions and then you know balance your ph and your and your buffer um, get your get your get all your nitrogen and phosphorus and potassium and micros back back up to, to go into the system again so depending on how much money you want to spend um, your your lowest tech is going to be that 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 sand filter and and we can we can spend a lot of money on water quality um, here's that that file I'm going to go ahead and pull that up and see if it oh look at that we're still on the screen excellent so um, and I'll, I'll try to put that link in the in the conversation too. Um, so so I just pulled pulled this resource up. I had like 20 different resources and I didn't want to send folks all over the place and have you know um, breaking them out regionally. Almost all of your universities that are that are involved with 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 agriculture are going to have some form of, of horticulture department. So go to your land grant universities, your extension offices and they'll have some little write-up or if they don't go to the state um, in, in line at the same latitude as, as you and 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 find um, some some nice greenhouse operational um, material for your area because they'll be talking about specific types of greenhouses and with specific environmental controls but um, we'll go through here and and look at the um, table of contents real quick and you'll see it's pretty much the the presentation that we that we had last Thursday. So uh, 
greenhouse industry, it gives you a little background and scope, which is important in understanding when you go to the design phase. The greenhouse structure itself, of course, that's one component. Uh, environmental controls. We've got the um, plant parts. So this is where you're, if you understand a little bit of the physiology, it, it will help you um, in your in your production model, uh, but you don't have to, you know, take plant physiology to, to be able to grow plants well. It's just, this is just a nice background. And we talk about the, the variables affecting plant growth, which are, you know, covered, covered in elementary form and, and really good. And they get you introduced to irrigation, nutrient control, what types of fertilizer, uh, this is a little dated, but it's still still very accurate. It was just a really nice um, layout, so I wanted to share it with the group. Um, plant propagation, if you're going to be producing your own plants, there's a, um, often a production greenhouse is, uh, the very large scale ones are gonna be, um, they're gonna have a plant propagation greenhouse that is an entirely separate system because the, the, the growing requirements, heating, cooling, fer fertilizer, everything, Essentially, all um, all of your requirements are going to be different for 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 transplants or seedlings than, than they are for your for your larger production plants. So pest control, that's another that's a huge one. So you're going to have a, a, a BPM for pest. Uh, you're going to have a, um, an irrigation schedule, and <clears throat> depending on the greenhouse that that you end up with, that's going to that's going to dictate you know, how, how easy it is to manage your pests. So, um, so here it is. So I'll leave that for y'all to read. Let's see. Now I've got some slides from, um, from a, a small propagation greenhouse that we put up um, last, this last spring, not this spring. Um, just to, just, just to, kind of go through a, a, an extremely small scale greenhouse. So this is for a, um, to facilitate some outdoor production. And this is kind of how a lot of greenhouses, even million dollar greenhouses look up front. It's a pile of still on a trailer, or a pallet, um, some concrete mixers and heavy equipment around. So we use the tractor auger to, to auger our, our, our pylons. Um, I can't remember the diameter of those, but but we had a string line set up and this is a, a most critical stage for the folks that are gonna be erecting their own greenhouses. Um, you have to get this right. Um, and in, in this system, uh, a, um, a still um, pipe is, is, is slid into the, the, the cement pylon that you can see the yellow container at the base of that, that auger is in the ground and we've got it at a certain height. And we're gonna we're gonna drop a still pipe that our greenhouse frame is gonna fit over, and then we can attach the greenhouse frame to the still pipe, and we've got a nice um, connection to the ground, and and these go pretty deep, so we went we went deep instead of wide, because um, they they kind of mess with the, the siding, and you have to cut around them um, if you have too wide of wide of a container. But I think these were maybe a eight eight inch diameter for this small greenhouse. This greenhouse is a a um, 20, 24 by, by 50, I think. So this, we, we use a lot of concrete even just for that small scale. Um, so the, here we're laying out the, the electrical service. So we've got some conduit. Um, I had a, my partner Bullet and, and a few friends kind of come in and, and, and helped here and there. Um, here's our dosomatic. We're setting up our irrigation system, and this is a, a very simple system. We've got a sand filter. Our water quality is really good. It just has some some really fine particulates, fine um, sediment in it, and so we filtrate that out. And then we've got um, a, an inline fertigation system, and the you use this is the black containers, the dosomatic system. So we, one is for your your macro nutrients and ones for your micronutrients or a supplement um, we've also got a fogging system in this in this greenhouse and i have good pictures to share of that but but we're gonna watch a short little video and it kind of will give you some insight into um, how simple these systems can set up and so um, this 
this is a, a four stage or four zone irrigation system in this greenhouse. So we've got a propagation table. We've got some holding area to the side and, um, and we use different sprinkler heads for, for those systems. And then I've got a fogger through so we can, we can run our um, fumigants or, or well, it would it'd be mist against, but and, uh, so we can mist our, our, our pesticides. We're, this is an organic greenhouse. So you can see our, our production table on the left and then just a big open space. We've got an automated uh, cooling window and, and cell in the back. And this is a, a, an expansion mansion, um, an, an, old, an old greenhouse that we just popped up kind of in a hurry for last spring. Um, you can see on the left side of the image, there's the, the ventilation fan and above it's a louver for your heater. So when your heater kicks on in, in the winter, it, it, that, that louver opens up. Um, the, the air is, is pulled from the cooling cell in the back to the, to the, the, the ventilation fan. And, and this is before we put on a, a thripe net um, in the front, we're building a, a head, head house for this this little propagation greenhouse this this fall, and and building some more production greenhouses. So I I chose to keep our propagation separate from our production. Um, it's good to get a you know a cow's eye view on these things. Now that we have uh, little jerseys that that pop in, and here's a completed very simple um, greenhouse that 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 took us a little over a month to erect. Um, you know. Um, to get to get all the components in, and so it it has electrical service. We've got um, propane ran to it, and we're ready to go. Um, let's see, do I have? Okay, let's let's pull up this this video. And I I chose to share this video with y'all because. A, this is an alternative to greenhouses, but also um, it's just really simple. Oh, seems y'all you know, weren't just watching the same video as as I. As I. Let's see if I can get that up. All right, maybe, maybe it'll work this time. All right, let's go back. Even we're not really hearing the sound on it. We're not hearing the sound. Yeah, I do not know how to get the sound on it, but um, maybe maybe could you also post uh, the link to this video in the chat box? Yeah, yeah, I'll I'll do that. So select a microphone, same as system. Yeah, let's see if that if that works. Yeah, I really, I like, I really want to use videos because um, they're, it's really illustrative, but I always have trouble. Can you hear that, Dan? No, not really. I hear like a little bit of background noise. So maybe, maybe that's just the sound coming through your mic. Okay. Well, we'll just, we'll just watch it because I mean, it's monkey see monkey do. Um, and it, it's a very short video.
so and and I can I can talk over it. So um, essentially, he's he's just tied in a single line. There's a a little tool that pops holes into the your your dist distribution line, and then you have a, a barbed grommet, as y'all saw, with the little sprinkler heads that just pop into it. And then he's he's utilizing a, a simple um, solenoid valve connector and um, filter all in, in in one unit, and 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 he's tying this to his to his um, water flow now. And so I'm going to go over all these parts. I just this was a really good introduction to the to the um, Loctite connectors and, and a lot of the smaller scale um, stuff or, or stuff that we use for the, the smaller systems. So, all right, let's get out of there and get back to the to the PowerPoint. Sorry about that, folks. I really trying to get the get this video stuff figured out. We've got another one too um, that I'll let's see if I can just. Well, I'll, I'll post to that. I'll post the video, video links in the screen afterwards so it's not throwing us off anymore. All right, so, um, so here's, an, here's that, that uh, trellis system that I was, was talking about earlier. This is, this is hugely popular and, and is a, a much less um, infrastructure cost. It's essentially just a, uh, a shade cloth or a plastic um, floated over um, some frame. This would, you know, immediately be shredded off in, in Oklahoma if there was plastic uh, on without any um, any means to hold it down. But they've got uh, um, galvanized wire that 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 actually holds down sections of these. And there's different techniques, and and it doesn't have to be plastic. It could be the frosted cloth, so it allows some wind to blow through it. Um, but but these are a, a hugely popular for reduced infrastructure costs, you're going to get some protection of a, of a larger scale system for folks that are trying to get a system installed with, with CARES Act funding and, um, and don't have the, the capacity to do the infrastructure re required um, to, to build this out. Um, all right, now we're going to, I've, I've got a PDF that I'm going to pull up. All right. So um, I'm glad I didn't just put links for this now. Uh, the, I use a lot of Netafim, and um, there are other brands. There's Toro's, another real common one. John Deere has a brand of irrigation components. If you're looking for local materials for an even, you know, a really small scale system or, or your, your vegetable garden in the backyard, you can pick up um, Dig. It's they sell it at like the Home Depots and Lowe's of the world. Um, they're they're usually going to be like in a hundred foot section of of tubing. If you're buying from Netafem or John Deere, one of those guys that do landscape scale or large scale horticulture, they're gonna they're gonna be in the the 500 foot um, rows or up to, to to several thousand feet, and they're harder to handle. And so the dig would be a nice grab for smaller scale. Of course, you're gonna pay more per 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 linear foot for those components, but, but um, Netafim and their, their website's really great. Um, and you can download these manuals very easily. So if we go through here, let's get on down to the materials. All right. So uh, most of your, your soilless medium bagged containers or, or containers with soilless medium, or even if you're using a, a, a medium of soil, um, um, rock wool blocks. Um, a lot of these materials are going to utilize these stakes that are stabbed into the the rock wool or the the soilless medium, and you're going to have a barbed connector um, at the end of that that tube that's going to re uh, regulate your or meet your your flow of water. So like a two point gallons um, per minute. Um, It isn't uncommon. Um, so you're gonna you're gonna have a stake. You're gonna have a, a little um, slip of tube that's gonna connect into a like a half inch or a one inch tube, and that's gonna be tied back to your 
your solenoid control. And so you can have that on a timer box. So whenever it's, you know, if your water schedule starts at 8 a.m., that solenoid opens up. We deliver water through that half inch tube, one inch tube, depending on the, 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 the scale of your irrigation system. And, and it goes out to these metered uh, stakes. Now we had some questions about growing multiple crops in, in, a, in the same space. And here's one way where we would have um, uh, these color coded um, on, on here, you can see they're calling it the WPCJ dripper. Well, this is a 0.53 gallons per, per hour. I think I said a minute earlier. I'll tell us. Um, and they, they've got various ones. So we've got um, various gallons per hour. Um, so if you had a, a you know, a, a a crop that needed a lot of water, you would use more. If a crop used less water, you use less, and that's going to also be influenced by the time that you're going to you're going to set your 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 water schedule for, which is going to be influenced by your soil medium, which has infinite possibilities. So that's why all these things are are designed by by folks with experience um, and growing this now what you could do is if you're experimenting with a new growing medium, you essentially could run your, your water schedule, um, go with a, with a, a 0.5 and, and run it longer um, and see, because what you're trying to do essentially is if we're growing like in a, a 10 gallon bag, for instance, with a soilless medium, we're trying to have a little runoff, but not much. We want that container to, 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 to to get wet and, and retain, you know, 80%, um, 85% of, of the moisture. You want a little bit of, a little bit of um, uh, flow out of, out of that, that container or that bag or that rock wool cube because it's going to leach some of the, the accumulation of, of minerals and salts. Um, so more dripper stake assemblies. There's all kinds of little components that go to these depending on the dripper stakes you utilize. Here's kind of the the breakdown. Um, you can go four way. I I'll typically have a um, so I'll I'll put my aisles in in an open area um, perpendicular to the length of the greenhouse, and then I'll I'll have um, three rows of of plants on either side of a, a drip line, or two rows of plants on either side of a drip line that that ties to these stakes. And so I'll get a four way and then I'm just popping that in and running two to the left, two to the right. Um, and those stakes go right into your containers and you can, you know, some people um, are real meticulous about where they put them. Some people just kind of jam them in there, but what you want all the water spraying inside the bag and, and it'll, you, you should be good to go. You don't want it too close to the, the core of the plant because you can damage the roots if you by jamming it in there. Um, so let's go down. So here in the middle, we can see the, in the miscellaneous components. These are those little punch guns that, that you buy. And I rec recommend um, if you're going to be doing a lot of this, get them because you're, it'll, it'll wear your thumbs down. And, um, and this, these are better than using a pair of pliers, which could damage the barbs. Um, so flex black poly, uh, ethylene, the Suplex, um, this is your, your smaller um, material, let's see, okay, here we go, drippers. So these are the drippers that are going to, they're going to be on, on the end of the smaller tube that's connected to the stake. And this is going to dictate your flow. Um, and it doesn't, it doesn't just have to be on a, on a, um, in a greenhouse system, these these are, these components could work on a on a trellis system outside. You know, in a, in a uh, next to the greenhouse, you can you can do bag production out, outside of a greenhouse with these very very easily. Sprinklers. Now I use one principal type of of sprinkler, so we'll go down. So this right here is what we saw in the video, and these are um, are are really nice. They're easy to change out. So if you have something wrong with it, when you're checking in the morning, you can just get, just pop a new head assembly on. Um, you've got your barb connector, the Superflex um, 
tubing. They utilize a stabilizer weight because when the water pressure kicks on, you know, it'll, it'll go sideways if it doesn't have a stabilizer weight. And below the stabilizer weight is a barbed female connector. Now you can buy these as systems in two, three and four foot, I think. And so they're going to, they're going to be mounted at the top of your greenhouse and you're going to, you're going to utilize a, a NetFM's formula to figure out which of the, the spinet sprinkler heads or the Vibronet sprinklers um, you're going to use for the system. So, so the, um, the spinet, those are going to be for your larger, larger areas. They're going to cover uh, like six to eight foot very well, up to 12 foot. The Vibronet is a, a, a much smaller flow and it's more of like a misting system. And so that's going to be on your propagation tables or for your for your flats of, of plants that you're you're growing to size um, to go out to the field. And you can see that kind of exemplified here. So um, so here is the um, and they're color coded. So VN, uh, BL or VN, GN dictates the, the colors on, on here. And as you download the manual and spend hours with it, you'll 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 kind of figure it out. It's it could be a whole PowerPoint presentation all all of its own, but um, if you need need a wider foot footage, you you just do a double double line. And these massive greenhouses, a, a lot of them will use a, a sprinkler system just like this. So even if you're even if you're set up with a um, with a drip tubing, which is, is much 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 more efficient, a better control of of or fertilizer and water, um, you may still have a sprinkler system set up in, in that greenhouse. And I, I highly recommend that. Um, the, a fogger and the foggers will, are up next. So here's a four-way fogger down here in the bottom right. Um, same system. So you've got a check valve, you've got the barb connectors and the weighted assemblies if you want that. And the, um, your fogger is going to be uh, a great way to uh, to, to get your pesticide out. So if you're putting out a, a um, some kind of a chrys uh, chrysanthemum py py pyrethrin, um, you can get that out r real effectively with a, a well-designed fogger system and it's pretty inexpensive. Um, you can also utilize the fogger. Um, you can tie that fogger up to that, that uh, solenoid valve connector and put a thermostat to operate that valve instead of a timer. And so if it gets, you know, to critical um, temperatures, like, you know, if it's, if it exceeds the, the 105 range in a greenhouse, then your, your fogger could come on to, to cool it off and it cools it off instantly um, when, that, when that happens. And so I, I recommend um, in hotter climates utilizing the fogger systems for that. Here are the components of the foggers you can buy independently. Um, more miscellaneous components and that that one gun is going to work for any of the the barb connectors. So it's essentially just punches a hole um, in the in your drip line in one side without going through the other, and it's um, great for the barb connectors. Now over time, um, you'll you'll probably pull you know pull these barbs in and out um, off and on, and you may have to move over and and plug plug that barb barbed hole. Um, so you get into the supply line or your black polyethylene tubing. It's not very exciting. Um, but, but here we go. Um, flex net. So drip lines. Now we're kind of getting, so you can utilize drip lines in a greenhouse system um, if, if the containers are at the, the right spacing, but it's not the most um, it's not the tidiest way to do things and and you're still going to be kind of like strapping them on the sides. So um, if that's all if that's all the budget accounts for, then that, that would be a way to uh, get a drip system into a greenhouse on the cheap. Uh, let's see, there was one more. Okay, so here's some fittings and connectors that you're going to be working with that poly tubing. And so they're going to be a 10 millimeter or a um, half inch um, tubing and these these contain or these these connectors um, slide up into the tubing, and then you twist the the blue knobs um, or black knobs onto the tubing. And you have to be real meticulous, or you'll 
um, or they can pop off, but these are, these are not intended to be under a pressurized system. And so that's another great benefit of this NetFM system. And, and one of the reasons I, I chose to show, to, to go through this, this, the sales catalog with, with y'all um, is because these operate under low pressure. And so if, you're, if your quantity is, uh, or you know, maybe you have a small well, like a lot of folks are operating on a, on a very small well for the greenhouse. So, so maybe, um, maybe a 20, 20 to, to 60 gallon, like something that would be a little more like a residential well um, you could you could utilize these systems in a 30 by 90 even for for fertile um, for, for your fertigation watering needs now if we drop down to here and then you got all kinds of it's just like you know any kind of plumbing you got a, you got t's and y's and and elbows and threaded parts and you can go to pvc so you could do part of your supply line down the sides of the greenhouse could be pvc and then you could go to the poly tubing um, i now just come right off of my my solenoid valves with poly tubing because they're because it's cheaper and 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 takes less time than working with PVC. And if I need to scrap, you know, 20 foot of it, um, I don't mind just cutting that out and popping in a, a, a coupling. So filters, you can get your filters here um, from NetFM, Rainbird, John Deere, all all those guys have them, but I I really like the um, NetFM and Rainbird filtration systems and these just screw off and you have a, a series of discs that you just kind of blow blow off with your hose or have a bucket there so you can clean it out and and put that back on you're always going to want to put a shutoff valve um, on the on the supply side of your of your filter so you can you can clean that out week, weekly or more often if you need and then um, here in the middle of the screen the manual screen filters that could be in addition to um, your solenoid valve, you're gonna have that connected in. So the, the disc filters are gonna be larger and tied into your supply for the greenhouse. So, so anyways, this is terrible, boring, terribly boring just um, going through one of those manuals, but, but that's the, there's a lot of specialty components to, to irrigation and um, using the, the best tech is, is recommended. So let's see, what else do we got on here? Uh, well, I'll, we won't go through the, through the other video. Um, it was just essentially a, um, it was a Caterpillar tunnel manufacturer's video and I think they, they're called um, Farmer's Friend. And I, I really like their systems and they've got some great videos um, on the, the Farmer's Friend website. So, yeah, Farmer's Friend's right here. And so I'll just, they have a YouTube channel and they've got some, some great um, videos if y'all are considering a, a cat tunnel. Um, we had a lot of folks from Northern Climates asking questions about about greenhouse production and and those those in those climates you're going to be using a gothic arch system so it can handle the snow load and you're going to have a, a tighter spacing on on your on your um, frame and and they they have a nice kit for that so um so let's clear that out and then we'll we'll go to questions and i am not seeing the let me stop sharing so i can see our questions and answers. All right, I do not see any questions or answers on the Zoom. Do we have any do we have any questions on Facebook then? Just checking I'm not seeing any Stephen. Okay. Okay. Well um well, that that was a just kind of a quick quick run run through and a little more um, information on the specific topics that we covered in the in the last talk. Um, there was a quite a bit of interest in hydroponic production, which which is can just get really specific, and so we may do um, do a like a tomato hydroponic production um, video in in the near future, and and then then do a separate one for lettuce production because the systems are so radically different. Um, and, and oftentimes the greenhouses themselves can be, can be different as well. Like you're gonna wanna 
a, a higher um, walled greenhouse for tomato production because the indeterminate varieties um, will grow as high as you let them and the higher you let them grow the more tomatoes you get so um, whereas lettuce is going to be smaller and and you're gonna um, not gonna have a, a as, as any any need for trellising so well without any questions I guess we're, we can wrap this up Great, thank you, Stephen. And uh, this video will be available on the IAC YouTube channel and the e-learning platform on the networks. Have a good day, everyone. Excellent. We'll see you.